Good morning guys, how's it going? I hope you're well. Welcome back to the Peak District. So today I've come to do some landscape photography and recently I've been thinking about a few things regarding the way I approach landscape photography. Today I thought I'd try something a little different. So I'm always kind of thinking about the post-processing stage when I'm taking the image and I think that's a great thing to do, I really do. I think it helps you pre-visualise what you're trying to achieve and so to take a photo with the edit editing process in mind really helps you achieve the desired look. I think it's totally the right approach, but what I've found quite recently is I've been doing a lot of focus stacking, a lot of HDR blending, and a lot of different pro post-processing techniques that uh, sometimes I've kind of thought to myself once I got back to post-production, maybe if I'd have done something differently, I could have got it all in one shot in the field. So today that's what I've come to do. I'm not going to do any post-processing on the images that I take today. Uh, the idea being that I kind of give myself a factory reset, if you like, kind of just to zone myself in, just to thinking about getting the shot in the field. So I'm going to try and take two or three photographs and just show you the JPEGs. I'm not going to apply any post-processing to them at all and see what I'll come out with. And hopefully going forward, that will help me think a little bit more about capturing the photograph in camera as opposed to doing a lot of post-processing. Now don't get me wrong, you know, focus stacking techniques and you know, exposure blending techniques are fantastic and they've got their place and I will use them in the future, don't get me wrong. But um, I just feel like maybe I've been uh, not overusing them, but probably when I'm setting my shots up, I'm thinking, right, if I could just uh, compose this a little bit here, I'm gonna have to focus stack it, but I think it will work well maybe I can recompose the shot a little bit more where I don't need to do a focus stacking technique. So yeah, that's what I'm working on today. Maybe if you're going through the same sort of process uh, yourselves, maybe this little challenge will help you as well. So let's get stuck into it. The sun's just coming up now. It's looking really nice, so really frosty and cold and crisp. It's gonna be a blue sky day today, but I don't see that as a problem. December here in the UK, the sun's always very low, so Hopefully I'll be able to focus on some of the landscape and not include too much of the sky. But we'll see what unfolds, guys. So I've got my first composition set up here. I've got the camera set up on the tripod and we're pointing back straight across to Bamford Edge, which we've got there in the background. It looks beautiful. Sunlight's filling the valley now and it's kissing the contours of the landscape and creating some really drawn out long shadows, which is really nice. And we're catching some of the rocks there on the top, which looks beautiful, it really does. On the far shoreline, we've got uh, a small outcrop of oak trees and they've still got their golden leaves on which is really nice and the sun is just illuminating them and making them a really rich orange colour which is beautiful really enjoying that on the camera we've got the circular polarizer on there which is taking some of that glare off the water and it's also bringing out some of the detail in the clouds in the sky because there's just a few small clouds which are helping the composition a little bit um, yeah, what I've decided to do as well, just to give a little bit of balance to the image, is include some of these dying ferns in the very right hand corner. I'm not sure they're 100% sharp, but I feel it just needs a little bit of balance in the shot. Without something in this near foreground, it looks like a little bit unbalanced, if you like, because of the contours of the ridge line. That's my thought process anyway. Uh, yeah, my F8, hopefully that's going to get enough depth of field to get everything nice and sharp. And yeah, it's looking really nice. I'm really, really enjoying this one actually. Uh, we're at ISO 200, I've got the two second timer on and also uh, we're at the 20th of a second as well. So yeah, quite a nice shot to start the day off. I'm gonna get this one taken now and then we're gonna head out and see if we can find something a little bit further up, maybe go up to Howden Reservoir and take a look around there. The larch trees are looking really nice this time of year as well. So hopefully, yeah, it should be a good morning of photography. Let's get this shot done guys.
took a short drive actually up from the last location and I'm parked actually by the roadside which is great I don't often get roadside locations so this is really nice it makes a bit of a pleasant change and I'm shooting across Howden Reservoir towards a group of pine trees that look absolutely beautiful and they're being sidelit at the minute by the sun which is streaming down the reservoir and hitting the bank on the left hand side beyond that to the right there's a very tall hill and it is in completely in the shades. What we've got is a difference in contrast between the, the foreground and the background element. But beyond that, there's another hill which has been illuminated by the sun. So we've got this laying effect where we've got the bright, very far distance background subject, the, the sort of mid-ground subject which is in shade, and then the foreground subject which has been illuminated. So we've got this contrast in colour contrast in light and also contrast in texture as well because the foreground, foreground offers so much texture. Uh, we've got these pine trees that have been hit by the side lighting and we've got these lovely autumnal colours that are just kind of behind the trees as well. So we've got this real popping sense of vibrancy. I've got the polarizer on as well which is really adding to this shot as well. It's really making those colours pop out taking a little bit of the glare off the water and just helping us see some of those reflections actually in the water as well so yeah overall I really really like this shot I prefer it to the first shot I think it's uh, absolutely beautiful and the, just the contrast and the light works so well here I think really pleased with this one so yeah we're at 130 mil, so we've zoomed in right across the, the reservoir there. We don't really want to incorporate too much of this foreground. There's nothing really here to show. It's really about that, everything that's happening there in the distance. So that's the focal, focal point of this shot. We're at ISO 200, we're at F8, and should speed is 40th of a second. Locked down on the tripod, we've got the two second timer on. There's a bit of breeze, but it's just helping us eliminate any camera shake because obviously we are at uh, 40th of a second with the long lens on so we don't really want to ha have any camera shake so yeah pretty simple straightforward shot guys and I'm going to take this shot now Well, I know a blue sky day is not really what we're looking for when we're out shooting landscapes, but it's so nice to be out on a sunny day, it really is, especially in such a beautiful location. And to be honest, uh, I really don't mind a blue sky day now and again. I think it's, I think it's just a joy to be outside when it's in such beautiful conditions, especially this time of year. And we've had such a wet spell here in the UK as well. It's just really nice to see the sun at last. So. Yeah, I'm just going to drink my coffee and then we're going to see if we can find one more photograph before the sun perhaps gets too high for us to do anything else. But truly enjoyable morning. And I think shooting this way without any post-processing in mind actually just gets you thinking outside the box a little bit and just frees the mind from any thoughts you might have, you know, that you might be doing to the image in the future, just to concentrate on the here and the now. And I think it's a really inspiring way to shoot and I've really enjoyed it this morning. I've got a couple of shots that I'm really pleased with, so hopefully I can find something else. So I've been messing around here for about half an hour now, trying to set a shot up. And I thought a wide shot was going to work and I've got this water in the foreground here. I was going to use a long exposure to try to balance the shot out. And, but there was something about it I didn't quite like. I think it's the fact that there's a lot of mid-ground and it's uh, quite bland in the mid-ground. There's nothing really going on there. So I looked into it a little bit more and actually figured out what I liked about the scene. And it actually was the group of trees in the background 
there's a group of pine trees there that just fill the bank and this shot's really simple the light's hitting the top third of those trees and they look really nice this gorgeous side lighting beyond the pine trees there's a whole section of silver birch trees the leaves have fallen and they've left like a purple hue which adds a separation between the pine trees and then that background so that's pretty cool what i've got on the camera i've got the circular polarizer on that's taking the sheen off the water in the foreground i've also got the 10 stop filter on as well the 10 stop filters given me a 13 second exposure at f13 and that's smoothing the water out because there's just a bit of ripple on the water at the minute a little bit of a ripple on the water at the minute and that long exposure is taking that ripple away and allowing us to see the trunks of the trees in the water so it's adding a bit of a reflection to the water which adds to the image i've got it set up as a color image because originally i was thinking black and white but when I looked at it on the back of the screen, black and white, it just wasn't enough detail in the trees really to be able to uh, justify making it black and white. There wasn't enough texture in the midsection. So I've gone with colour and actually I think the colour works really well with the purple hues in the background, these lovely dark green pine trees and then the subtle tones of the light coming through the trees reflecting in the water. I think, I, I think that's really nice. I think it adds a lot to the shot just wanted to say a massive thank you to everybody that's picked up a t-shirt or a hoodie i honestly blown away i couldn't believe the response i've had so i just like to say from the bottom of my heart thank you so much it's really helped me out especially in the quieter winter months uh, with work so yeah really really appreciate it guys and thank you so much i haven't really mentioned it on the channel i didn't want to bombard you with spammy adverts but i just want to say thank you to everybody that's been over to the website and uh, pick one up really do appreciate that so yeah, thanks so much. So I'll put this image on the screen for you guys. Hope you like it. Uh, I think I really like it. And yeah, I think yeah, it's been quite a successful morning really. So uh, yeah, please like, subscribe and all that good stuff. And I will see you next week guys. Take care.